Okay, this is the first robo taxi ride. You have to manually get into the car, but I just put some stuff into the trunk here. So let's see how this thing operates. Test the ride share support. It looks like y'all did hit a uh, rider pullover request. Is there anything I, anything I can help you with? This does seem like a situation where we are going to have to provide some feedback. It's gonna circle around again and probably stop. I'm surprised that it didn't stop already. Now, if it fails to park and pull over, then we could be in an infinite loop situation. I'm undoing my seatbelt. So let's see if I press the button here right now. Now look at this tight space here. Oh, there it goes in reverse. Look at that, <laughs> speak of the devil. Very fascinating that we're now right in the middle of the intersection. I'll be the automated door closer for you. <laughs> All right, so we are in the robo taxi and it's asking to fasten seatbelts. So I believe that this is required before it can actually take off. So let's go ahead and put on the seatbelt. You can see the sign down there saying that seatbelt is required. And the hazard symbols are on, meaning that it's waiting to take off. There we go. So now you have to press on here, start ride. And something interesting I noticed as I was editing this video is that the screen mentions fasten seatbelt and you can see the red symbol in the driver's seat. The safety driver or the safety rider, he goes and dismisses this message. I found that really interesting. And there it just began. So super exciting. So from my understanding, there are multiple versions of the software running in these robo taxi vehicles. And there's a limited number here in Austin driving around. And some of them have a golden path in front of the, the vehicle. This one looks like it's hard to tell. I think this is a blue, but it has the self-driving in the upper left, which likely means this is version 14 running. It's hard to know without jumping into the menu, which if you look on the screen there, there is no menu icon. On the standard version 14, you have a car icon that you can press on to go in and see all the settings, but that has been removed here. If, if you look really closely though, there is a fingerprint smudge right in that area, which means that it's probably a hidden button. And it is the gold path. The tentacle in front of the vehicle is a gold path. So this is not version 14. It might, must be a variant, a variant specific to RoboTaxi. So here, as I think a lot of you have already seen, the screen here shows various settings. So this is synced with the profile. So it pulls up your Tesla account details. So it has your favorite saved for music preferences. The temperature setting gets set the same as it was the last time you were in the robo taxi all this is customized based on the rider and for those of you who are not aware this has the front bumper camera this is the model y juniper it's a standard model you can purchase this car it's it's a, a regular tesla there's nothing special about this car so it's super exciting elon mentioned that by the end of 2025 there will be 500 plus robo taxis driving around now, it, we have yet to see whether this is gonna be completely autonomous, where they remove the supervisor, but we do have a, a Tesla employee inside of the vehicle, and they're not allowed to really talk or converse with us other than saying thank you, uh, kind of at the beginning and the end of the trip. One thing I learned later is that some employees will hold conversations during the ride. However, the vast majority remain quiet. It's just not allowed to talk about the robotaxi, the functions or features, or Tesla in general but you, as you can see we're trying to turn right here and we've got some traffic here let's see how it moves out look at that beautiful and there have been a lot of rumors and this is probably still the case let's take a look at the Tesla uh, representative his finger is on the handle I don't know if that's a requirement but typically that is always Something that you'll see is just in case something goes wrong, there is for extra safety, the ability to stop or interrupt the self-driving. Here it's getting over, look at this, going into the tight space there between the vehicles to turn left. Really cool to see that. 
So this is something that you can experience by getting FSD either on a subscription basis or by purchasing it for $8,000 and experience this in your own vehicle. And this feels very similar to what I have in my Model 3 with Hardware 3. It's a completely different version, but it operates very similarly where it just does everything automatically. So up here turning left and we do have a red light. It's a red arrow, which means we definitely cannot turn. All right, here we go. It's going to be a protected left turn coming up here. Beautifully done. Now I am going to, as we're heading down this path, it's a pretty straightforward uh, road here. Uh, there was a little bit of braking that we just experienced, but I'm going to do a quick test. Now I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to take off my seatbelt. I'm going to see if a, an alarm or a message shows up on the screen. This is going to be an interesting experiment here. Okay, so here we go. Right now I'm undoing my seatbelt. Okay, there we go, we get a message. There we go, we get a message saying, fasten seatbelt or the vehicle will pull over. So fastening it really quick before it pulls over. So definitely you're not allowed to do that. The one thing a lot of people are raving about with RoboTaxi is it's very clean. It's a consistent experience. Look at the back, it's just, there's hardly any dirt. It's, it's very, it smells nice in here. The interior is, uh, you know, the, the white seats. So it feels very, you know, futuristic, modern. It'll be really nice when there's no steering wheel with the cyber cab. That's gonna be really unique experience. So depending on when you reserve RoboTaxi, you may have to wait a while, and then other times it's immediate. There are times where the RoboTaxi is not operating. For example, after midnight, you're just not able to access and use the RoboTaxi network. But the cost to take a RoboTaxi across Austin here is a fraction of what it costs to jump in a Waymo. And the difference here, the big difference between Waymo and Tesla is that with Waymo, you have to use Uber to book it and you book an electric vehicle and you never know if a Waymo is gonna show up. However, with RoboTaxi, it's guaranteed as long as you have access to the RoboTaxi network, you're guaranteed to get a RoboTaxi. So here it's a green light and we're waiting to turn left, there's, we're waiting for traffic. And then at the first opportunity with a gap, it will go. Now, take a look here. We're not in the intersection, but with the new version 14, if you're too far into the intersection and the light turns red, like it just did, it will actually go in reverse. But taking a look behind us, there's nobody behind us. So it could have gone in reverse if it needed to. Here now it's green again. We're gonna wait for these cars to pass and then turn left. Okay, here's our chance. Rolling through now, let's see. Yep, perfect. This is excellent. It's gonna go right now. Look at that, someone getting out of their car went around them so nicely. I love when it does that. and now pulling over. So it's trying to find a spot to pull over. And you're gonna see here, there's a small gap on the right up here and it chose to actually go around. So we just passed our destination and it's probably going to circle around to try to get as close to that drop off pin. It's gonna circle around again and probably stop. I'm surprised that it didn't stop already because now this is extra time on the trip, an extra detour. Essentially, what it tries to do is get as close to the pin as possible and pull over to park safely so it's not interrupting traffic. Now, I think it was actually gonna turn, the right turn signal went on. I'll have to go back and review that, but I think the right turn signal went on for a split second, which was very unusual and then it switched back to left. So that could have created some confusion for somebody behind us. But as you can see on the maps there, it's just gonna basically go all the way back around to the same spot. Now, if it fails to park 
and pull over, then we could be in an infinite loop situation. And this may be a scenario where the safety driver or the safety rider here will have to do something. Now, I'm very curious to find out here how it drops us off. So again, we have a green light and we're waiting to turn left and it's not a protected left turn. So the sign even above says yield on green. It's unlikely that full self-driving or the robo-taxi can read the signs, but it's not always necessary because the signs uh, in a lot of cases are, it's kind of implied based on the roads. And I'm unsure if the maps have data that includes some of the restrictions. The big one being no, no turn on right or no, uh, no right on red. There was some hard braking. Now look at this tight space here. So we have to squeeze in. Obviously there's enough space, but very cool to see it going through a tight gap. Now, again, here is our pin. Let's see if it actually pulls over. It's gonna have to search for a spot and put its hazard symbols on. Uh, it's the right turn signals on. Let's see if it actually, again, that spot is not available. So this may be a situation where we as the passengers would have to just kind of say, hey, we want to get out. And then, you know, you hit the pull over button. This does seem like a situation where we are going to have to provide some feedback. So as soon as it gets back around to the pin, I'm going to press the pull over button. In fact, when it slows down to a slow enough speed before I hit the pull over button, I'm going to try to get out of the car. So I'm going to actively, while it's running, I'm going to press this button and see what the vehicle does. If that doesn't do anything, then I'll push the pullover button. So it's a yellow light now turning red. And we are not far enough forward where it would actually go in reverse. But if I was driving, I'd probably back it up just a little bit. But the Oh, there it goes in reverse. Look at that. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Very cool. And that's because people were crossing the road. Really cool to see that. So we had enough space behind us to do that little maneuver. And there you can see in the reverse camera, there's nobody behind us. Really great to see that behavior. playing it safe. That was a, a toss up. I, I probably wouldn't have gone myself. So it's very accurately detecting the speed of these vehicles and then how fast the car can move to make it through a gap in traffic. We may end up again going in reverse depending. The light is still green. Now here is interesting. It's turning red and once again we're kind of blocking the intersection and obviously we can't go because we have traffic here. And now we have some pedestrians that look to be crossing behind us, actually. So, <laughs> so very fascinating that we're now right in the middle of the intersection. You're going to take a look here. You're going to see we are in the middle. And our safety uh, gentleman here in the front uh, just pressed a, a button. I think it's kind of reporting some things for Tesla to review is my guess on that. And some of the early access original group testers, like myself, have a camera icon inside of their vehicles to report issues like this. So I imagine this button, which is probably where that, those invisible fingerprints are in the bottom left, is kind of a report button. Really great to collect feedback like that. So we're not, we're not in the way of any traffic and the people that are crossing the intersection when they get the chance can now go behind us. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so now once we come down here, I'm going to try to get out by pressing the button on my door. Once it slows down, right turn signals on. It's doing the same thing again for the third time, trying to pull over. So let's see if I press the button here right now. It's not doing anything. Now we'll go ahead and say pull over, confirm. 
vehicle is finding a safe location to pull over and it missed its opportunity on the road where the pin was so now it's going to go up on the left and try to pull over let's see if it finds a spot on this road now there is a sign that says no parking on the right side because you will get towed if you park there the next measure to really ensure we get out of this vehicle here <laughs> before wasting another 10 minutes, I would say, would be to remove our seat belts. And that may be the next step here. Test the ride share support. It looks like y'all did hit a uh, rider pullover request. Is there anything I, anything I can help you with? Yeah, uh, we were just kind of getting stuck going around the block. Uh, couldn't find a spot to pull over, so I just clicked the, the button. Awesome, awesome. Let's see if I can get you to stop uh, right next to your pin this time around. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So very fascinating there. We hit the pullover button and it automatically called support to go along with it. I love that. So th there's someone monitoring and helping helping us out when we need it. And in this case, it looks like they're going to initiate or maybe manually come in to pull over the car and make sure it stops this time. Okay, so here now with a support agent connected, I believe that it will be pulling over at the best opportunity it possibly can. So even if we have to block the road for a split second or two, I think this is um, necessary to, to be able to get out of the vehicle. And it looks like now it's turning right instead of left, which if you turn right on this road here, you are able to pull over. Oh, it just changed to left. Oh no, it's doing it again. <laughs> so let's, let's see. So there is some speculation here that this is a new version. Oh, okay, now it just stopped. There is some speculation that because it's a new version, there, there was this, this little hiccup. Thank you. All right, take it easy. So there you have it, my first robo taxi ride. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. This is soon expanding to many other cities and I hope they can work the kinks out with these small little hiccups to be able to expand a lot more quickly in the future. Tesla is on the brink of solving this and I can't wait for that future. It's coming very soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Appreciate all of you. Bye now.